What's going on, guys? We're talking Auburn football here in June. And, you know, a lot of media outlets would like to think that Auburn's defensive line will be quite possibly the number one uh, defensive line in the country. Now, that is arguably debatable. Uh, we're going to talk about some of that today as we talk about the Auburn defense coming into 2019. A lot of positivity, especially since the uh, hiring of Kevin Steele back in 2016. We're going to talk about that in this video. And we're going to talk about some of the key factors that make this defensive line uh, roll so well, uh, so to speak. A, a game that I'm going to reference is somewhat the LSU game. I thought the Auburn defense played very well in that game, especially up front. Uh, we, we're talking about Derrick Brown's return, which was huge for the Auburn Tigers. And we'll get into detail as to how this thing could possibly go and how Auburn could possibly be one of the more elite defensive lines in college football this particular year, especially with all the athleticism uh, that is returning. One thing to note is Dontavious Russell will have to be replaced in the interior, especially at the beginning, the first few games of the season uh, on into before, you know, with the LSU game, Dontavious Russell was a strong force in that uh, in that particular defense, and it's just going to be very hard to replace him, but I think Auburn has some viable options in that. I hope you guys enjoy this video. War Eagle. Talking Auburn on the defensive line, a lot of me media sources would like to think that Auburn will probably have one of, if not the best, defensive lines in the country. For many years prior to Kevin Steele's arrival at Auburn in 2016, Gus Malzahn had an offensive machine going at Auburn and a lot of the Auburn fan base, you know, would, would think like, man, if, if we could ever team this thing up, this great offense that Gus Malzahn has with a, a, a just a sound defense. I mean, if they, they could just get guys off the field, you know, I, we think that Auburn could pr possibly produce some high level results. So Kevin Steele comes in in. 2016, bringing over 30 years of coaching experience. Uh, Auburn, prior to his arrival, was averaging way over 20 points per game uh, in the Gus Malzahn era. But once he hit the scene, he started to, to bring that number down. As a matter of fact, under 20 points per game his entire time there. Uh, Kevin Steele also coached at Bama LSU and his alma mater, Tennessee. So he definitely has some great experience as a defensive coordinator and has been a very, very good contribution uh, to Auburn's efforts over the past few years. But a guy that we just don't talk about a lot is Rodney Garner. Uh, Rodney Garner is a former Auburn player who, who is currently the defensive line coach. OK, he's a great bulk of his work, though, came from Georgia back in 1998 through 2012. Uh, he was there and he was a part of that that string of of highly successful Georgia football teams uh, that won over 117 games, two SEC championships, and just as he's been promoted at Auburn as the assistant head coach, he held that same title in 2005. He's also in the very unique uh, fraternity of, say, Auburn, Georgia coaches who played ball at the opposing school. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, Rodney Gardner played ball at Auburn back in the 80s and had his most successful tenure as a coach, in my opinion, at Georgia. And if you look at Vince Dooley, I mean, everybody, if, if you've been unless you've been living under a rock, every Georgia fan in the world know who Vince Dooley is, led Georgia to their only national championship back in 1980, was a graduate from Auburn. Also, you can also look at Pat Dye, who gave Auburn some of his most success in the 80s with four SEC championships, was a graduate of Georgia. All right. So when we look at this thing, um, you know, Garner coached many greats, such as David Pollack, who is now a ESPN analyst. And at Auburn, he coached D Ford, Carl Lawson and Jeff Holland. So now when we start to look at this defensive line as the number one defensive line in the country, we're going to talk about a few things that make this defensive line so elite and that makes this defensive line perform at its highest level. Now, we can't talk about this without talking about 
the buck linebacker position at Auburn. When the buck linebacker or the defensive end or whatever you want to call him, it's a very hybrid form of a position on the football field because the buck linebacker is being asked to not only play the role of uh, defensive end, defensive line, he's also asked to play linebacker duties out in the flat as well. So he has to be a very athletic player. Auburn has produced a lot of these great guys here over the years. You're talking D Ford back in 2013, 14 tackles for loss and 10 sacks in 2013. Here's the result, an SEC championship and a national title appearance. Auburn didn't have this level of production at the line. I mean, at the buck linebacker position in 2014 or 2015. And we all remember those results in 2016. Carl Lawson had 14 tackles for a loss and 9.5 sacks. During this year in 2016, Auburn was in a very unique position. One of the hottest teams in college football, really with a huge opportunity to be the first two loss team in the college football playoff era to have that opportunity to potentially make it. Now, of course, they had a lot ahead. They would have had to beat Georgia. Would have had to beat Alabama, didn't beat either one. I thought they should have beaten Georgia. Al- beating Alabama that year was going to be a stretch anyway, but still having that opportunity because of great offensive play and optimal uh, play at times on defense, especially from Carl Lawson. Carl Lawson and D4, by the way, are now employed in the NFL. Also, you talk about 2017. Jeff Holland. I'm just trying to show you guys the importance of this buck linebacker position and how it really, really catalyzes this Auburn defensive line. In 2017, Jeff Holland had 12.5 tackles for a loss, 9.5 sacks. Here's what happened then. Auburn beat two number one teams within a three week span, had a viable opportunity to yet again be another, uh, the the first two loss team to make the college football playoff, but just didn't have that much success against Georgia in the 2017 national championship. We talk about 2019, Auburn is poised to have one of the more elite defensive lines in the country. Well, for really good reason. You have Derrick Brown, who we talked about a lot, who will be returning. He's one of the most highly recruited defensive lineman, really one of the most highly recruited players in Auburn history, decides to come back for his ten, uh, senior year. Also to team up with him, he also has Marlon Davidson, who could have easily had gone to the NFL as well. Might not have been a high as high draft pick as he probably will be with a successful 2019, but with having all of this athleticism coming back, you talk about TD Motrie, Uh, You also talk about Nick Coe coming back. That gives this defensive line the opportunity to be one of the more elite defensive lines in the country. Now, I talk a lot about the LSU game. I talked about the LSU game in my introduction. Man, I really enjoyed what I saw from the defensive line in that game. And that gives some promise as to what the 2019 season could look like. And in just my opinion, I think once Auburn lost that game to LSU, Pretty much the, the, the fire left because the defense just did not play with the same level of intensity that they played in the LSU game, just in my honest opinion. You talk about only holding a pretty good LSU offense to 22 points, 370 yards. Now, did not create any turnovers, but very, very effective along the defensive line. You talk about two sacks. Uh, Seven tackles for loss, five quarterback hurries in a very, very effective defensive output. Now, I'll go out on a limb and say as far as breakout players for Auburn, a lot of people may say, like, what do you mean breakout player? How is Derrick Brown possibly a breakout player? What else does he have to to accomplish? Well, I'm going to tell you what. I just don't think Derrick Brown has had that Nick Fairley type season he has not had. Of course, he won't have the opportunity to produce the kind of numbers that say Carl Lawson and Jeff Holland and those guys produce because of the position, but he has just not 
been able to identify himself as just an Auburn all out great. And a lot of the reasons why is because he's just been under the shadows of so many great defensive players during his tenure. I mean, you're talking, uh, you know, uh, Jeff Holland back in 2017. You're talking about Dontavious Russell, who helped to anchor the interior line for Auburn. You talk about Deshaun Davis. You talk about Trey Matthews, who doesn't play the cornerback position. I mean, who doesn't play on the defensive line. But those are names that kind of had Derrick Brown in the shadows. You know, you also talk about Carlton Davis, all of these big names for Auburn. Although, you know, Derrick Brown was is great. He's an excellent football player, but he just has not solidified himself as that Auburn great, in my opinion, just yet. This year gives him that opportunity to do that because this is his defense. He is one of the most experienced players on this defense. He's going to have to provide that leadership role for inexperience at the linebacker position. He's going to have to provide that experience also within the interior defensive line because he's not going to have Dontavious Russell this year. So I believe if Auburn is going to have an elite defensive line, I mean, the number one defensive line in the country, that's totally up for debate. But if they're going to have an elite defensive line, I think optimal Nick Fairley type play out of Derrick Brown is going to be very paramount coming into this particular season. All right, guys, let me know what you guys think about Auburn's defensive line. Do you think they will be the quote unquote number one defensive line in the country? Do you think they have the opportunity uh, to have elite status uh, this year? I'll also mention that I think the Auburn defense will be a lot more effective as well because it is, you know, in my opinion, that Gus Malzahn being the primary play caller, his claim to fame is not only putting up points, not only rolling up yards, but he's very good at time of possession. And I think that's going to be a huge factor when you talk, to, talk about having an elite defense, especially ones that Kevin Steele has been able to produce, even though his, his guys were on the field pretty much the whole time. Like I said before, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to Vernon Speak Sports Auburn as we're going to be talking about football here in the Deep South like nobody's business. We're on the plains of Auburn. The battle cry is War Eagle. See you on the next video.